basic problem with pricing in channels is channel coordination. So you're a manufacturer, and instead of selling your good directly to, the, to your customers, you're going to sell it to an intermediary, maybe a retail store, and they're going to sell it to your customers. And so your problem is how do you price, the, how do you set a wholesale price for your retailer that then they, they turn around and set their own price, when they're, they're going to set their own price and sell to your end customers. And the problem that comes is that when you're setting your price to maximize your profits, and they're setting their price to maximize their profits, jointly, you may be leaving some money on the table. That is, by not coordinating your behavior, you may end up with prices that don't optimize profits for the whole channel. And if you could somehow get together and, and organize things better, you can do it better. So, reviewing what we said the other day, uh, if you have, if you, you have a differentiated product, so the amount that you sell depends on the price that you set, as opposed to a competitive product where you can sell as much as you want at the competitive price. Okay, then you've got this demand curve, and you're choosing a price that trades off the quantity you sell for the price that you get to maximize the product and price and quantity. And so when you do that optimization, we're going to consider the simple case of a linear demand. So your demand is just some constant A, Minus some minus b times the price you set, so the, the uh, price elasticity of b and, and your profit depends on what price you set determining the quantity that's demanded. So uh, when you work through the details there, you get uh, by differentiating the, the profit condition and solve in setting the, 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 the first order condition equal to zero you get the optimal price, and this is really all you need to remember if calculus scares you, that you're going to set your price to be, up here for a second, uh, given this demand, uh, if you price at zero, you get A, uh, you sell A units, and if you price at A over B, you sell, uh, you sell zero units. So the rule for a monopolist is that you just price halfway in between A over B, and your cost, or if your cost is zero, then you just price the average of A, and you, you, you just price it half of A over B. Okay. So, and in general, you you choose a price of the quantity that you sell is half of what you would sell if you were a perfectly competitive firm. So those are the results we get. We get a profit, and uh, and we get our price. Now we'll add in the complication of a retailer. So suppose that instead of selling directly, you're going to sell to a retailer at uh, price W, wholesale price. And then we're going to ask, well, what's the retailer going to do? Well, he's got exactly the same problem you had before, only now instead of a cost, he has your wholesale price. So we can just substitute W for C, and we get the same results. Right? So now uh, he's going to set a P, which is the average of uh, a over B, the, the amount that, uh, the price that, uh, at which he can sell, uh, at which he sells zero, and your wholesale price, which is his cost, and that will maximize his profits, and the quantity he sells will be half of the maximum he could sell. Okay. So now the manufacturer, you as a manufacturer, are going to take the quantity that, will, that the retailer will sell as a function of your wholesale price. And that's your new demand. Well, if we look here, this is just A minus BW before we had A minus uh, BP, and now it's divided by 2. So W is our price, and we can just use the same function. That we, we've, got, we've got the same function we had before, so we can just take the same results and carry them right along. So we can substitute out. Now oh, that's great. So, what we learn here, if we go back to the, let's go back here to monopoly pricing and take our, and I'm going to write down these results. So we learned that the monopoly price P was equal to A over B plus C over 2, and the profits were. A over B squared minus C squared over times B over M. And we also have equilibrium quantity.
90, which is uh, let's see, this thing here. It's A over B minus C times B over T. Okay, so those are the neat results we generated last time. compare the results we got here with the results we had earlier. And we're going to, for convenience sake, assume that the cost is equal to zero. Okay. I won't change any of our results, but it will simplify the calculations a little bit. So here's the manufacturer's profits. And now we're going to compare them. And here are the retailer's profits. And now we can compare the, the total channel profits with what we were making and we find that, let's see, the manufacturer here is making profit of A squared over 8B. And if we look here at his profits before, and we've got C equals 0. And this turned out to be A squared over 4B. And let's see, set our Z's equal to 0. We get A over 2B for our price. And uh, A minus uh, BC over 2 for the quantity we sold. So now we'll just do our comparisons. So, or just A over 2. So now as we do our comparisons, we'll see that the manufacturer's profits are now half what they were. And the retailer pays uh, W equals A over 2B, which was half of the original price, and sets a price, which is 3A over 4B, which is uh, exactly in between the original price and the competitive price, uh, or the, the, the maximum price that the consumer is willing to pay. Okay? So when we, we compare, our total channel profits are now 25% more. The, the retailer's profits are a quarter of the original firm's profits. The firm, the manufacturer's profits are half, and so together they're 25% lower. The optimal P, the P that the retailer is charging, is 50% higher. Right? And the Q that, that both the retailer and the, the manufacturer's C is 50%. So if you remember back to, to our monopoly pricing model, we said that the monopolist prices at half of the, the competitive price, or at, at, at the difference between, sorry, the, the price that exhausts the demand where there's no demand, and the competitive price. So he gets half the quantity sold in the competitive case. So now we're going to do that twice. That is, the manufacturer is going to have the demand, and the retailer is going to have the demand. So we're going to end up with a quarter of the demand. Is this good for anybody? Profit has to be lower. Okay, profits are lower. Is this good for consumers? Why not? Okay, prices are higher. The, the amount that's being supplied at this higher price is the half of what it was before, even under the monopoly case, right? So this is where having a not monopoly would be a good thing because, because we've got something even worse now. So what can you do to fix that? Well, you can implement a more complicated pricing scheme, and there are four different ways that firms can, can solve this problem. One is vertical integration, right? If you just buy the retailer, then the, the uh, firm would solve the problem directly. And the, the second one is a two-part care. And suppose that the manufacturer sold the good at price, at price zero, and its cost. 